Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about New Type USA, which was one of the big anime magazines in the 2000s. This is January 2007. I think that's like 16 years ago, something crazy. But this was a magazine that I got as a teenager. I was subscribed. I would get them like that was one of my Christmas gifts was a subscription every year to New Type until it died. Um, I was there to the bitter end, <laughs> but it was amazing. It came with a free DVD with three full episodes. I don't think I have a lot of the DVDs anymore, or if I do, I don't have a clue where they are. Um, and it came with a manga insert and a centerfold, and usually a full-size poster. Um, and this one is a big preview of things that were going to be debuting like in Japan, and hopefully we would get access to them, but often you either had to wait forever or just would never show up in the United States. Um, my friend, my best friend got Anime Insider and we would bring them to school like after we'd look through them and like swap and I'd look at her Anime Insider and stuff. Um, but this was twelve ninety eight, and this was like expensive back then and I feel like now that's the price of all um, magazines that like that's on the low end. I feel like magazines are prohibitively expensive now. But we had a whole, like, anime economy going in school because I'd trade the DVDs for other, like, anime stuff with other anime kids. But, um, I feel like I was so, obviously, well-informed back then because there was only so much coming out and I didn't know, I, now I don't know what, you know, what's coming out, what's out, what's good. I feel like I have to stumble upon or get recommendations. Literally, I would still subscribe to this if it still existed. I know there's Otaku USA. I'm rambling, I'm so sorry. But I've read weird reviews online about people subscribing and then not getting any issues, so that would not be cool. But anyway, here we have Ace Attorney. Um, this was a big meme at the time, like all the con um, anime conventions there would be people dressed like him and they'd have signs like this and like doing the pose <laughs> but here we have sergeant frog and this code geass i don't really know <laughs> i was like i'm so informed i don't know i don't know these <laughs> i watched this one recently and it's really cute but i just didn't have access to it um you might see in this there were all these campaigns to get the anime network like call your cable provider or your direct TV or whatever um, and request the anime network so you can have anime on demand and it was like oh my god please what we didn't have streaming or anything like that like it's so different now but I remember this was on the anime network on demand um, my best friend who had the anime insider had cable and digital cable is what it was called at the time and she had access to it also Scion was like always in anime magazines for some reason like they were like this is the nerd car and it always had weird art like this I remember a square one that kind of was like all goth and haunted looking <laughs> specifically I remember that one but they would every month this magazine would have these giveaways and there was a little card that you would fill out with your name and address and you would select something and um, I would always every month I would try to remember to fill it out and I would pick the one like they have three to give away, ten to give away, three to give away, two to give away, two to give away, five to give away. And there'd always be like a big thing like this, like, you know, artwork or whatever. But I would always fill it out for the ones, like pick one that had the most to give away so I'd have a higher chance is what I felt. And I ended up winning one time. I won a Princess Tutu Volume 1 DVD, and I still have it to this day. And they called my house, my landline, sorry my cat just ran by. But they called my landline, my mom had to like, she answered and she had to tell them like, they had permission to send her stuff, because I was a minor, like, they're like, can she receive this? She won! And I was like, holy crap! I was so excited. <laughs> I would like decorate the cards too, and be like, this might improve my chances. <laughs> Here we have O Edo Rocket. I don't, I don't know this at all. I'm, I like, 
but I'm sure I like read all of those. Like we scoured these things. There's another Nintendo DS game. It was so. I feel like Nintendo that was like really tied to anime stuff because of Pokemon. But I loved my DS. I still have my the first one I ever bought, my pink Nintendo DS Lite. <laughs> We have some of the frogs, so cute. This was like a style of anime back then. Like big old eyeballs, like hyper exaggerated. I remember Ergo Proxy. I thought she looked like Amy Lee at the time. Also, don't mind, speaking of Amy Lee, <laughs> don't mind my thumbnail. I got black hair dye on it. Um, Devil May Cry, those games were huge. He totally got like a redesign recently, he looked totally different. And I, by recently, I could mean like in the last 10 years. <laughs> you know how it is maybe if you're older. ADV was like a huge distributor. It's weird the things that you remember. And then we have like Best Buy, which Best Buy just got rid of all their physical media. But I, they had a huge anime selection back in the day. And I would go there a lot for my anime DVD needs. I remember buying Gantz there. <laughs> my mom bought me Gantz. She did not know what she was purchasing. Um, John Gray, when they were on tour with, I think, Corn or somebody. Um, here's their tour dates and stuff. My friend Enoch definitely went to this, but oh, I didn't go. What would have loved to, I'm sure, at the time. I was a sedan. I loved Drunk Gray. I'm sure when I saw this, I was like, oh my god, Drunk Gray. Oh my gosh, look. See, get Anime Network on your cell phone. They were always doing these little um, campaigns to try to, like, get it out there so people could actually, like, access the Anime Network. Because it was not available most places. But anyway, Toshi was my favorite. Loved Drunk Gray. I remember one time they were on Fuse on, I think, Steve's Untitled Rock Show or whatever that was. Servers is what we called it. Um, and my friend called me on the landline and he was like, turn it on Fuse, turn on Grey's on. And I was like, oh my God, it was so funny that he thought of me, called me on a landline and I had to like turn the TV on flip to catch it. <laughs> it just seems like a totally like different era. This was a, um, anime corner store. There were like different little websites and stuff. Like you could order from websites, but I was a minor. Obviously I didn't have a debit card. Um, I didn't have a credit card or anything, or a job to make money. I got an allowance, but my parents were like, uh, the internet's gonna steal our identities, and no, you can't order. So I literally had to order from the Right Stuff catalog, and I'm very glad that that catalog existed, or I, I would have been like, whatever's at Walden Books, and which did not have a great selection, and Borders, <laughs> RIP, both of those. But they would do this every month too, the top 10 um, selling manga and anime DVDs. And this month was Pokemon, Lucario, and the Mystery of Mew, Full Metal Alchemist, The Conqueror of Shambhala, which I think maybe I have, um, Dragon Ball Z, Wrath of the Dragon, Final Fantasy VII, Advent Children, huge, huge, definitely pirated it. <laughs> But I had a copy. Howl's Moving Castle, definitely had that. Full Metal Alchemist Volume 13, and Yasha the Movie 4, Fire on the Mystic Island. My friend who I keep talking about, her name's Aletha. She had an Inuyasha obsession. She thought that's still like her favorite anime. And she always would get the movies. And she would have to go. I'm so sorry that this is just like me waffling, but she would have to go to a movie rental shop that her mom knew the owner at and they would import stuff for her they would like if an Inuyasha thing was coming out like this lady somehow could get it from Japan and she'd always have the movies early from Japan and then she would buy them again when they were finally released in America and I always really liked the movies but it was so crazy that that is how she had to do it like and it wasn't a chain it wasn't like blockbuster it was like a front row like video like you know one of those hometown type videos. Now we have another cat joining us. <laughs> so sorry. Um, Gundam Seed Destiny Volume 4. Tenshi Muyo Ryooki Volume 2. 
Can you get out of here, please? I loved Tenshi when I was a kid. Come here. Come here. And Trinity Blood Volume 1, as far as anime DVDs go. And then for manga, we have Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, Volume 1. <laughs> I cannot believe she's standing right on this. Can you get out of here, please, ma'am? Thank you. <laughs> Loveless, Volume 3. Inuyasha, Volume 27. That's a lot of those. Sayuki Reload, Volume 5. GTO, The Early Years. Uh, Shonen, Junai, Jumi? I don't know. I don't know that one. I know GTO, but I don't. <laughs> Ayori Awashi, Tenjo Tenj? Oh, I'm so sorry. Oki Hoshi? Oki Hoshi. <laughs> Fruits Basket, Volume 14. And Nana, Volume 4. I was a Nana girly. I have a Nana tattoo. It's the lotus that Nana has. Um, and I also loved Fruits Basket, but I never watched the new one. Anyway. <laughs> Here we have a live action situation, DBZ digitally remastered, I remember my friend's brother, that I keep talking about, Lita, her brother had these box sets, remember the orange big box sets? They started making slim packs to try to like, I don't know, save space, but <laughs> they used to be huge. A gigantic Sergeant Frog, yeah see, this, they were going to call it Sergeant Frog in the United States, but it was Kororo. Kororo in Japan. Again, ADV films. <laughs> it's like ADV, Tokyo Pop for Manga, Viz. Here we've got Gundam Seed. Is that what it was called? Gundam Seed Destiny. My partner is a Gundam nut. Gundam. Is this the one where it was like the art was done by Clamp, maybe? Or the character designs, I'm not sure. I'm not really well versed. Here we have the voice actress. That was a big thing at anime conventions. I don't know. I haven't been to an anime convention in many years. I'm an old lady now. Um, but they would always have like the American voice actors. I remember our friends getting um, posters signed and stuff. But we have more art. The uh, person who sung the theme song, Hitomi Takahashi, and we got a bunch of Gundams, these little Zaku guys, my partner builds Gundams, it looks pretty cute, oh this is Eureka 7, he also loves those, or that, not those, that was a pretty big one, I think this one must have been on uh, Adult Swim or Toonami or whatever it was called at the time because it was huge and it usually they aired on TV if they were like like the big ones were like Naruto and Bleach and Eureka 7 obviously Sailor Moon <laughs> what is this? Gunbuster I don't know her Oh, this looks like an old one. They must have remastered it. That was another thing they uh, would make stuff available again. Here we go. Paradise Kiss. I love. I just got the um, big omnibus that they put out of the manga. I loved Paradise Kiss. So cute. I love the fashion. I think the artist's name is Ayazawa of the mangaka. Um, but loved her, loved her, all of everything, and they finally started putting out, um, Neighborhood Story, I think, I got the first volume of that, but I loved it, I loved Nana, I loved Paradise Kiss, just gorgeous, I wish I still had all my manga from back in the day, but I moved a lot, these magazines stayed at my parents' house, so, so I still have all of them, but the manga I took with me, unfortunately, I should have left it behind. They did a whole spread on, this was way hyped, the frogs, way hyped. And I remember like, I don't think it aired on a network or anything, what I can recall. But I remember like, people that weren't even necessarily anime people would like somehow catch it and 
more into that. Here we have this La Chevalier d'Eon. I don't know. <laughs> Looks pretty though. I don't even, I'm not even gonna attempt Marduk Scramble. I think maybe I read the first volume of that manga. Sounds familiar. Code Geass. like the Japanese voice actors and stuff. Back in the day, I don't know how it is now because I'm, you know, I'm out of the loop. I'm not, you know, amongst fandoms or anything like that. But people were very elitist about watching subs instead of the dub. And now dubs are so much better than they were back then. Like it made sense to be anti-dub kind of back then. But now I feel like They've gotten, like, it's incomparable. Can you get out of here? <laughs> um, but yeah, that's why they have the uh, Japanese voice actors and stuff a lot of the time. Because we did watch the subs. Nowadays, I... I mean, I, I mostly watch dubs. Can you stop, please? <laughs> stop it. Um, Ma'am. Ma'am. <laughs> Beat it. But anyway, nowadays, I watch mostly dubs. Unless there's absolutely, like, none available. Again, this is that anime that was, like, big old eyeballs, a dot for a nose. <laughs> I feel like that's kind of what people think of when they're, like, meanly thinking about anime and, like, trying to make fun of people. Which I don't think they do so much anymore, but it was rough back in the day. <laughs> there were, like, very few... And people were not always nice to anime fans. <laughs> Death Note was another big one. There were always, is his name L? There were always L cosplayers, like, at the cons because it's very easy to do. And also Misa, is that her name? Misa, yeah. Um, a lot of Misa cosplayers, tons of L cosplayers. That was like a staple, like you were gone. So you could do bingo and be like, that could be a free space essentially. Oh my gosh, the right stuff. This is the catalog I was talking about. They also had a website and a phone number you could call and order. Um, but I would like fill out the little order form. They had bags and figures and keychains, plushies. I think that's from Gravitation. I think that's what it's called. That felt like a few didn't last Is that it? Or here? What's it called? Anyway. Manga, DVDs, plushies, merchandise. <laughs> I loved it. I wish I still had the catalog to look through. I wonder what the prices were. This is a bunch of articles. Oh my gosh. I didn't do one of the giveaways. Sorry about my hair dye nail. <laughs> I can't believe I didn't do one. I tried to be on top of it, but you, yeah. Fill out like feedback and everything. So it was like valuable for them too to get consumer data. <laughs> but here we have Angel Dust. This was a manga sample in one of these back in the day. And here's the manga sample. It's kind of cool that it was huge, but it would always kind of just dump you in randomly, and I never really liked that, because I mean, I, how am I to know what's going on? But I love that it's huge, and it reminds me that Tokyo Pop would do preview um, volumes, like they do a whole like manga-sized volume of something. Um, a whole, a whole manga-sized volume of, like, different upcoming titles. That's how I found out about the Demon or Oran and a few other titles, but I specifically remember that one because I have it. But here's the centerfold. I hope it's nothing. I'll just do it on the bikini. 
best student council. Oh, I don't know if I can open it all the way without bumping the mic. Yeah. So you could have it, you know, front or back. You know. I remember the only one I ever tore out was the wallflower because I loved the wallflower. I was always a shoujo girl, but I read the manga and the anime came out. I don't think they ever, I don't think I ever finished. I know I finished what they made of the manga, but I don't feel like it ever had an ending. But I loved the wallflower, so I could not resist tearing out the um, centerfold. It had all the, the four guys that she lived with on it. Here we have another ad for more DVDs. I wish it had the um, prices, but here's the cans. It had a big ad campaign that was like banned in TV, like on TV in Japan, and of course I had to watch it. <laughs> I also had it open wide. I don't. I watched a couple episodes of Ease Otherwise. Maybe I had one volume. But I don't think I've seen the others. Oh, here's the... <laughs> you got a hat. If you... Oh my gosh, here's the price and everything. Okay. Yeah. So three payments of 30 bucks. So it was like 90 bucks. And you got a hat. I had that one. And it did not fit well. It was like not made great. But I wish I would have gotten all of them, and I, I wish I knew where they were. But I picked Minchi because I liked Excel Saga. That one's cute too, but... I picked him... But yeah, $90 like does not seem crazy for a magazine now. I pay... Like, what, $50 or something for... Or, maybe not, I don't know, $30? $60? <laughs> four issues of um, Enchanted Living magazine. It's the only subscription I still have. I went down with a ship with Martha Stewart Living as well. But anyway, here are... I always loved seeing the fan art and the fan letters. Um, my friend who I've mentioned a few times got a letter published in Anime Insider back in the day. She asked... It's so funny. She asked what Richard Cox looked like he was the voice actor for Inuyasha and Ranma from Ranma One Half, and we loved both of those. Um, and she had a dream that I told her he was ugly, so she wrote to Anime Insider and I was like, can you put a picture of him in the magazine so we can know what he looks like? And they published it and they put a picture of him. And it's crazy to me that we did not Google. We did not Google. We did not know what Richard Cox looked like until he was in the magazine. And I love that it was because she had a dream that I was like, he's literally ugly. <laughs> but, sorry about my neighbor's dog, my window's open. But I was always like, they would put the ages, I think, yeah, age 16, age 16, age 20. And I'd, I remember seeing like these like really beautifully rendered age 22 um, drawings and they'd be like younger than me and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> but. This is a long, it's a long letters. But I loved reading those and I loved looking at people's art. So we included a picture of their cat. <laughs> so cute. Some more fan art. I don't remember if I ever sent in any fan art, but I did not get any published. <laughs> Here's some pictures of the convention. 2000s conventions are like, of course I think they were great because they, that's when I went, but um, they were so wholesome, they felt so fun, like I never ended up in any bad situations personally, but I was also mega square and like, <laughs> there's a list of all the conventions, but I was not gonna end up in trouble, there was, you know, I was just with my friends. I think like some, you know, who knows what happens when teenagers and young adults are allowed to run amok and have a hotel room. <laughs> we had a lot of fun. Here are popular anime and characters in Japan at the time. The 
top ones are from oh the first one is Melancholy of Haruhi uh, that's that was like a huge meme too and the number one character is Haruhi <laughs> that's funny similar fan art so cute yeah we got um Copic markers and like Prisma markers like accessible towards the end of high school which would have been around the time this came out and it felt like it revolutionized our anime <laughs> drawings <laughs> here's this an ad for the anime that's the centerfold but I never heard of that they would do this every month as well like a um art book style. Art books were really big. I don't know if they still are, but anime art books were huge. And they would do this every month and have like the character sketches. And, like, I just love looking at that kind of stuff. I only have a couple art books. I know I have um, The Art of Angel Sanctuary. Yeah, well, Angel Sanctuary, because I was a huge Angel Sanctuary fan. And once again, my friend had the Inuyasha one. She got it imported. <laughs> she also got um, PlayStation 1, like Inuyasha games, imported. And we'd try to figure them out, but they'd be in like Japanese, obviously. And we just not know what it wanted us to do. <laughs> so we just had to button, button smash until we got it. But it was really fun. Voice actress. Little guy. <laughs> they always did cosplay. It was always this lady. Uh, so often it was this woman. And she wore the same shoes a lot. That was something I noticed. And I feel like nowadays, like, cosplay is so wild. Like, they, they could have featured so many people if this magazine was still around in this format. But it was always this, this woman. And she wore same shoes a lot. She's not right now, but like this is like, it's a good cosplay. But compared to cosplay now? Blink, 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 you know? <laughs> Some little robot guys by Tomotaka Takahashi. This was probably on top because my partner looked at it. <laughs> partner had this album. One time I got robbed <laughs> and they stole all the CDs out of my car except for the Larkin Seal CD and the Burlesque soundtrack. I was like, hmm, no taste. <laughs> they took all my murder dolls in Wednesday 13, but they left Frankenstein drag queens from Planet 13, so a win is a win. But it was so funny that the ones that they left behind, <laughs> like they spend enough time to be like, mm, no. <laughs> Couple toys, merchandise type stuff. They used to sell um, box sets, but they would sell like, if the one volume was just out, they would sell volume one plus the box that it would go in and then like a little freebie. And I remember getting the Azumanga Deo volume one plus the box with I think it had a Chio pin and maybe that guy or this guy or the one that Sakaki calls her dad. <laughs> but it's like I never got the rest of them. So I just had this box. <laughs> I don't think I ever got any more volumes. I liked the manga much more and I still reread as a manga deo at least once a year. Here's some game. Game spotlights, here we go, Phoenix Wright. Funnily enough, I used to get that confused with Harvey Birdman Attorney at Law. <laughs> they were like linked in my brain for some reason. Sorry about the cars outside. I hope it's not too horrible. I don't know what this is, but it looks cute. It kind of reminds me of Stardew Valley, which I love. I think it's my favorite game. Final Fantasy 3, I remember when this came back out on Nintendo DS. I think I have it. 
as well. And it was funny because I bought it at, if it's free, I think it's free, but anyway, I bought it at GameStop and I bought a used copy and they didn't wipe it. And when I was looking at like the names of all the characters, they were all names of people I knew. And I went to hang out with friends later and they were there. I was like, is this your game? <laughs> And one of them had sold it back to GameStop and I bought it. I thought that was really funny. He should have just sold it to me because I would have given him more money probably than GameStop did. But I thought that was really funny. And I was like, uh, I know them. The names were like, it was this group of three people that were like BFFs. So seeing those three together and one of them is like a really unique name. I was like, there's no way it's not. <laughs> Here we got some manga previews and like a little write up. And that was so handy to just be like, oh, this looks interesting. Let me read about it. I'll have to grab that one for sure. I remember Final Fantasy figures too were being, a, they were a huge thing. At my very first anime convention, my goal was to get a cloud figure, and I did. And to see a cloud cosplayer that was really good, and I did. <laughs> Loved cloud. I had my first ever Final Fantasy game was Final Fantasy VII, and I didn't know anything about Final Fantasy when I got it. I just knew I wanted a Final Fantasy game. And my mom was at Sam Goody. <laughs> she was like, she just saw a Final Fantasy game. And bought it because she knew I'd been wanting one and it happened to be like the iconic Final Fantasy 7 but neither of us knew that at the time but then my ex-boyfriend stole it <laughs> I wish I still had it because it was just so funny that that's the one that she happened to get a hold of and I'm really glad that my mom was really supportive of my weirdness all these years but here, here are some manga that were new releases at the time. Um, let me see if there's any volume ones. So we can see Dominion Tank Police, volume one. Free Collars Kingdom, volume one. Just to see what had just come out. I'm not really recognizing this Kitchen Princess. Ushishi, I don't know. One Piece was only on volume four or 13. Isn't that wild? W. Juliet, I read a little bit of. It was funny, Subasa Volume 12 was coming out, and um, I had a friend, actually a couple friends, but the one I keep mentioning, she collected Subasa, and I collected um, XXX Holic, which were kind of like convergent type, you know. That was like its little gimmick. But I loved Holic. Never finished it though. Happy New Year! Anime Castle, that was a big one. It's so wild, like, they look, this looks so, like, dated to me now. But it's also very nostalgic. And now you can just, like, stream it. We have Crunchyroll, and you just watch whatever. Look at that. A reward program. Look how, like, that looks so, like, that is very of the time. so funny to me. More ads. I, I even like the ads. Like, I'm sure back in the day I was like, <laughs> ads. <laughs> Give me more articles, but now I'm like, gosh, there's birds. Can you hear that? Um, but now the ads are like way nostalgic to me. Because a lot of these websites and like distribution companies don't even exist anymore. I wonder if this is one of those buy the first and then you get the box set thing because it says also available with a custom box set and special booklet insert so I wonder if that's one of those Disgaea my partner loves the Disgaea game games new releases on DVD let's see Black Cat, Bleach Volume 2. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, Full Metal Panic. Let's see. 
trying to see if there's any that I was like really into. I remember Kyokara Mahou, Volume 2, Naruto Volume 8. Crazy. Pokemon Advanced Battle, Trinity Blood. Just like totally ancient. <laughs> totally ancient now. Then here are the how to draw if you have like tablets and stuff. Like that was like wild if people had tablets back then. Like now, you know, everybody has an iPad and can just doodle right away, but little Ask Jack. They always had this like little guy. I think he's maybe an editor or something, but you ask him stuff. And here's another ad. j -List and J-Box. Those were huge. Um, one of them had snacks and I was like always wanting to order all the snacks. Here we go. Um, the green tea, like matcha Kit Kats were my favorite and I love the matcha Pocky. And now I can get it like at my local grocery store. And that is wild to me. Like when I was in high school you could get um chocolate and strawberry at Walmart. <laughs> Pocky. And now they have like a whole little section which rules. But I wanted to try everything. Like if I'd see it like the black black gum and all that like which is very strong. Is that the black black gum? I think so. Yeah it is. But I wanted to try that so bad and I think it was finally at like borders or something, but they would have little like sections once in a while there. But J Box was where you could always get the weird kind of off the wall stuff. But it was before they had like the subscription boxes or like you could just get it at Amazon or whatever. And the Gothic Lolita, Lolita Bible also loved that. And I think there was a magazine called The Cure, which I have a copy of that I'll have to dig out. It's just Gaia. The game. Um, but I will have to dig that out. It was all like J-Rock themed and I took it to my hairdresser for prom. <laughs> I was like, can you make me look like this Japanese man, please? The answer was no. She sure tried, but <laughs> we can't all be, you know, as beautiful as the J-Rockers were back then. But I hope you enjoyed this, at least a little bit, trip down memory lane. Um, I have plenty more and shoujo beat if that would be interesting maybe not as interesting because so much of it is manga but there's probably like i think there's little articles and ads and things in that too which might be cool and nostalgic but i definitely have many 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 